Hi, this is Man of Server Boy UK. Uh, today I want to quickly share something I want to work on housing, um, which I've been using it since um, some 20 years ago. I went through the original thesis, uh, the way that the PhD thesis was written about it, the sync algorithm and parallel sorting, things like those. It was pretty, uh, I was pretty grateful in the sense that these academics, they spend time and built something which I was to me is, has been very useful. I've used it for not only backup, um, but on recovering this, backing up the whole image and saving a lot of servers. And uh, surprisingly over the years I haven't been for once encountered a probabilistic error on two files not being synced uh, even though there's a chance that there there could be error according to the uh, original research algorithm. So um, yeah, it, it's all about probability. Now, i <coughs> been um, uh, thinking that your, I've been using it for like sparse image or, or KVM images and um, sometimes I I didn't get quite the performance that I expected so there was time that I wonder if it really works that way or if it's just copying the whole um, megabytes of files over or even gigabytes of files over so uh, today I just, since we have YouTube <laughs> and I have the, the um, incentive to, uh, to, uh, to post a video, so I, I grabbed this as a little exercise to test uh, a, 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 a 100 megabyte uh, binary file, see if it really does the job. Okay, now let's get to the screen. I basically have um, two files. I created the original file with uh, a DD of 800 megabyte, and then um, do a little modification uh, of the copy of it, which is 100 M, and just essentially saying that. Uh, for a block size of one, the first after the first hundred bytes, I write uh, randomly write ten bytes in it. So I seek two hundred and randomly get random number and write ten bytes of it and modify in place. So this is where the load chunk option is. So to verify it, the modified file is here. The original or the one without modification or zero is here. So do I compare? Then you see, uh, starting from byte 101, I got random digits here for the bytes, while the other file is zero. So that's it, that, that I got, um, I can verify that I got a, a file with a delta of 100 bytes. Oh no, no, 100 bytes, no, 10 bytes, sorry. All right, so um, then I my remote system is here. Uh, so in the temp folder, I have some megabyte file there. And by, how do I know which, which, which I comparing the same thing. A, I think, is the original. I mean, the one which is zero. Let me, let me check. Yeah, it is. So the hundred M is the one with the delta. So what I am doing now is to remove it. So I remove it. This remote system, I have it removed, and I copy it. Make a copy, which means I have a zero byte. Uh, not zero byte a 100 megabyte con zero content file. Just make a note of the inode number, it's 5885. And if I do a compare, obviously uh, it's the same, right? Same. 
Okay, now that the task is to sync this 100 M on my local system, which has some modified bytes, to that remote side, which is zero bytes. Okay, so essentially trying to make this file here the same as this file here. This file has about 10 bytes, which is here, which are not zero, and that side is all zero. So what I am doing is basically uh, using an in place parameter. In place means that the other side would take the delta and modify this file in place, meaning it doesn't copy or create a new file based on the original content of this file in the delta. All right, so uh, and then 100 Mac. The remote side is yes, uh, temp 100 Mac like that. Oops, syntax error. For the, 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 what does it say? Error. Oh, unknown option. Sorry. <laughs> Here you go. All right. Done. So now it said it sent 51k. We see 71k. Obviously, it's not. If you look at the algorithm itself, it's not like sending 10 bytes. It needs to send the hash uh, checksum of number of blocks cross do a comparison of the block hash and send back which blocks are to be uh, touched and to be uh, update so th these are the the overhead but it's a lot less than um, 100 megabyte right so that's the idea of our sync so let's speed up and speed up a lot let's go back there this is the remote side and let's check the i know so it says 585, which is the same file uh, that's correct with in place. And then do a compare. Ah, now I got this, which is essentially the same as that one. So they are the same file now, I mean, same content now. Uh, and it works that way. So happy, right? now. One more thing is to see if I don't do in place what they will do. So I go back to here and then what I'm going to do is I am to overwrite the 100 Mac file, make it zero again. So it's now zero again. 5 for same I know. Doesn't matter. And zero. Okay, so I will do it again, but this time I would forget about the in place. Here you go. So it pretty much does the same overhead in terms of the network transfer, right? But the only difference I let's see is the hundred map here. Now is a different I not number. So it does create another file. So the idea is it's good in certain circumstances that if, it, if there are corruption, interruption during transfer and things like those, it would saying we just um, forget about the interim file where you're transferring over. It's like a file name with dot something, like a hidden file. It will erase it so you don't corrupt the original file. So, so that's the whole idea. And then once the whole the transfer is over, our thing will start creating the new file, which is in this case I know number five eight six, using the original content plus the um, the delta. 
I'm not too sure though uh, if it's doing a very efficient copy of the original file to the to to combine with to merge with the Delta to create a new file. There might be a way to just pawn to the original blocks without ha ha having to do a, a more or less like a copy on write uh, COW copy and write situation where where you're reusing existing blocks and you're not creating all these overheads and creating new blocks. So for that I'm not too sure. But in, in principle if you do that then you are creating new files and it's like a 50 gigabyte file, 100 gigabyte file you essentially need to to do all this overhead just for say 1k byte of change and and that's not very efficient so essentially if you put in place there as my first example then the in place would reduce or, or eliminate this overhead um, so that that's the idea I um, I have to admit I have a little doubt sometimes on on uh, it's let, let's, let's see the version housing I'm using is 3.1.3 it's been very reliable over the years like 20 years but I you know in terms of these operations many times I am like in particular when you send an VM image over KVM image if there is any corruption of the image your 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 KVM wouldn't run so these are things that I sometimes are, are pretty worry about that um, I believe I remember there is certain command certain say libweb certain command that I could track a file uh, before the backup process is considered done I um, that part I would try again uh, I mean I would uh, do it over again next time in the next video perhaps to to see how we could do a little more robust remote image thing so that we could um, have an assurance um, but, but going back to um, remote VM backup all the time I've been using what, what I usually call AB system backup where I use warm standby meaning the other side the VM is up and running so it's file level based backup rather than um, block level based backup uh, obviously there are active files open like SQL database files and things like those where you can just do a um, housing without worrying about integrity but, but then application layer same stuff I believe should be done at application layer so it's a different story all right, so um, I'm I'm glad today I because of this video I brush up myself a little uh, and convinced myself that that outsing over the last twenty something years since its advent is is a very sound algorithm and obviously obviously there are many patches updates or not patches but improvements over the years on on these things and is still one of the most efficient uh, remote file synchronization file replication tools that I uh, would love to use for the rest of the, of the uh, years thank you so much for listening enjoy